Here's a quick introduction to the indigo bunting. It's important to know the classification of anything you study before diving into it, so I thought this would be a good place to start. The scientific name for the indigo bunting is Passerina cyania. They are in the Passeriformes order, which is the order for perching birds, like all the songbirds that you see outside your backyard. They are in the Cardinalidae family, along with the cardinals and grosbeaks. And this family has a total of 42 species, and 25 of those species live in North America. Birds in this family are small to medium sized with long tails, short wings, and fairly long legs and feet. That makes them suitable for perching. Um, males of these species um, are usually have really bright breeding plumages, and they're really cool to look at, like this northern cardinal and indigo bunting male. Habitat requirements for the indigo bunting are a little different than a lot of species. They actually prefer bushy edge habitats rather than unbroken forests, so unlike a majority of wildlife, they have benefited from all the forest fragmentation that has occurred, and they are likely more abundant now than they ever have been. They have a very large range covering all of eastern United States during the summer and even a small band in Florida where they are present year-round. Other than that, they spend their winters in the lower latitudes and migrate twice a year in the spring and fall. The diets for indigo buntings mainly include seeds and insects, but they can be seen foraging at all levels from the ground up into shrubs and trees. Chicks are started out being fed mostly on insects while in the nest, and they feed alone during summer months, but as you can see in the background picture, they forage in flocks during the winter. This is probably because in the winter they are not worried about defending breeding territories and mates, so they can use the benefits of protection from predators and all the flock benefits of foraging, but they also have to deal with increased fighting, but give and take some. For reproduction, males establish and defend territories to attract mates. The better the habitat, the more females he can attract and retain, and more offsprings he can produce. Indigo buntings are one of the few species that use polygyny as their breeding system. Polygyny is when males have multiple females. This strategy is successful only when females can raise a brood alone. Most passeriforms cannot raise, not even just passeriforms, most birds cannot raise a brood alone because of the energy requirements it takes. But the indigo buntings, females, can raise theirs alone. The chicks are altricial, as you can see, this is the picture. That means they are born like helpless, naked baby dinosaurs. Females construct the nest totally alone, and it's this open cup made out of grass, leaves, weeds, bark, strips, and they're lined with finer materials to help protect the egg and the young when they hatch. In most cases, they are fed entirely by the female, but there are some times that the males will help feed the young only when they are nearly old enough to fledge. He does this so that the female can begin her second nesting attempt. Indigo buntings produce two broods per year and lay three to four eggs per clutch per brood. They have an incubation period of 12 to 14 days, and the egg color ranges from white to light blue with brown or purple spots on them. Young usually leave the nest 9 to 12 days after hatching, so that can be pretty quick, and if you have two nesting attempts and multiple females, you could potentially have 8 to 16 eggs a year, and it's a really good breeding strategy for animals that can pull it off. The conservation of the indigo buntings, since habitat has not been a limiting factor for that, this species and they're doing really well, um, the indigo bunting is rated as least concern on the IUCN red list. The population size is estimated around 26 million individuals. Because of increased forest fragmentation throughout the years, breeding ranges have been extending since the 1940s and now include much of the southwest, so right now they're really... There's no concern that they're doing great. And a little fun fact to end the video, a group of buntings are collectively known as either a decoration, a mural, or a sacrifice. I think that's really weird, but whatever works.